the last lecture we have discussed some theorems on convergence of x today i will continue my talk now the first theorem states that a topological space xt is housed of if and only if every net mx can converge to at most one point and we know that a space is said to be a housed of a space if and only if for every pair of distinct points in the space there are two disjoint neighborhoods of those points and here we have to show that a topological space x t is housed of if and only if every net in x can converge to at most one point let us put this theorem let x t be a topological space and let every net in x can converge to at most one point we have to show that xt is hausdorff if possible let xt be not hausdorff then there exist two distinct points x and y in x such that every neighborhood of x intersects every neighborhood of y because we know that if the space is not hausdorff then there exist at least two distinct points say x and y in x such that we are not able to find two disjoint neighborhoods of x and y that means every neighborhood of x intersects every neighborhood of y let n of x and n of y denote the collection of all neighborhoods of x and y respectively clearly both n of x and n of y are directed by inclusion relation we have proved this result consider the cartesian product n of x and across n of y and we denote this uh, cartesian product by p we now define a relation on p as follows that n1 m1 and n2 m2 are belonging to p then here it is clear that n1 and n2 are neighborhoods of x and m1 and m2 are neighborhoods of y so for ordered pair n1 m1 and ordered pair n2 m2 in p we define n1 ordered pair n1 m1 is greater than or equal to ordered pair n2 m2 if and only if n1 is contained in n2 and m1 is contained in n2 first we show that p is directed by this relation which is not now the first condition let ordered pair n m belongs to p then uh, ordered pair n m is always greater than or equal to ordered pair n because every set is a subset of itself so n is contained in n and n is contained in m now the second condition uh, let ordered pair n1 m1 ordered pair n2 m2 ordered pair n3 m3 are in p and ordered pair n1 m1 is greater than or equal to ordered pair n2 m2 and ordered pair n2 m2 is greater than or equal to ordered pair n3 m3 then we find that n1 is contained in n2 and m1 is contained in m2 and similarly n2 is contained in n3 and m2 is contained in m3 and these uh, inclusion relations imply that n1 is contained in m3 and m1 is contained in m3 and so by the definition of relation we find that ordered pair n1 m1 is greater than or equal to ordered pair n3 m3 and so we have shown that this relation is transitive now the third condition let ordered pair n1 m1 ordered pair n2 m2 are in p then there exists an ordered pair n1 intersection n2 m1 intersection m2 in p such that ordered pair n1 intersection n2 m1 intersection m2 is greater than or equal to ordered pair n1 m1 why because n1 intersection n2 is contained in n1 and order uh, in uh, m1 intersection m2 is contained in m1 
and uh, we also find that uh, ordered pair n1 intersection and 2 m1 intersection m2 is also greater than or equal to ordered pair n2 m2 why because n1 intersection n2 is contained in n2 and m1 intersection n2 is contained in n2 hence we have uh, proved all the conditions for a relation to be a directed set so we can say that p with this relation is a direct set as every neighborhood of x intersect with every neighborhood of y so an intersection m is non empty for every ordered pair n m in p and so there exists some element say x subscript n m belongs to n intersection m for all ordered pair n m in p now we define a mapping f from p to x such that image of ordered pair n m under f is equal to x subscript n m for every ordered pair n m in p since p is a directed set so f is a negative x we shall show that f converges to both points x and y let q be a neighborhood of x and v be a neighborhood of y then for each ordered pair n m in p such that n m is greater than or equal to ordered pair u p so that n is contained in u and m is contained in p we have image of ordered pair n m under f is equal to x subscript n m and this belongs to an intersection m and an intersection m is contained in u intersection p because n is contained in m and m intersection is contained in p and u intersection v is contained in u and also this is contained in v so we find that f is eventually in both u and v and u and v are neighborhoods of x and y are uh, any neighborhoods so we can say that f is eventually in each neighborhood of x and f is eventually in each neighborhood of y so f converges to both points x and y but this is a contradiction because we have assumed that every net in x converges to at most one point so we arrive at a contradiction and so our assumption is wrong as we have assumed that space is not host of so our assumption is wrong hence x must be host of conversely let x be a host of a space and let x y be two distinct points of x then there exists a neighborhood n of x and there exists a neighborhood m of y such that n and m are disjoint because space is host of as a net cannot be eventually in two disjoint sets that is if a net is eventually in set n then it cannot be eventually in set m so no net in x can converge to both points x and y hence a net in x can converge to at most one point now before coming to next theorem i would like to tell you the next theorem is very important because this is the generalization of the theorem that is function is continuous if and only if function is sequentially continuous um, the difference is that uh, in this theorem we have replaced the sequences by nets now the theorem states that let x t and y v be two topological spaces then a function g from x to y is continuous at x not belongs to x if and only if whenever a net f a such that a belongs to a converges to x not in x that is here f is a function from directed set a to set x and this net converges to x not then the net g of f a such that a belongs to a converges to g of x not in y here 
g composition f is a function from directed set a to set y and so g of f a is the net in y and this converges to g of x now let us prove this theorem let g be continuous at x naught and f a a belongs to a b a net in x converging to x naught then we have to show that the net g of f a a belongs to a converges to g of x naught let m be a neighborhood of g of x naught because we want to show that um, in this net g of f a converges to g of x naught then we have to show that this net is eventually in each neighborhood of g of x naught so here we are taking a neighborhood m of g of x naught and since g is continuous at x naught so uh, we know that g inverse of m is a neighborhood of x naught as f a uh, net f a converges to x naught then we know that uh, f a is eventually in each neighborhood of x naught and since g inverse m is a neighborhood of x naught so um, net f a is eventually in g inverse of m and so there exists some point a naught in a such that f a belongs to g inverse of m for every a greater than or equal to a naught and this implies that g image of f a that is g of f a belongs to m for every a greater than or equal to a naught hence we can say that um, net g of f a such that a belongs to a is eventually in m the net g of f a such that a belongs to a converges to g of x naught as we have shown that that g of f a such that a belongs to a is eventually in each neighborhood of g of x naught and g of f a such that a belongs to a converges to g of x naught conversely let f a converges to point x naught imply that g of f a converges to g of x naught then we have to prove that g is continuous at x naught if possible let g be not continuous at x naught then for some neighborhood m of g of x naught there does not exist any neighborhood n of x naught such that g of n is contained in m as we know that a function g from x to y is continuous at point x naught if for every neighborhood m of g of x naught there exists a neighborhood n of x naught such that g of n is contained in m but here function is not continuous at x naught then for some neighborhood m of g of x naught there does not exist any neighborhood n of x naught such that g of n is contained in m that is g of n is not contained in m for every n belongs to n of x naught where n of x naught denotes the collection of all neighborhoods of x naught thus for each n belongs to n of x naught there exists some point the x n belongs to n such that g of x n doesn't belong to m because g of n doesn't belong to m then that means there exists some point the x n in n such that g of x n doesn't belong to m as n of x naught is directed by inclusion relation this is a directed set so the function f uh, from n of x naught to x defined by f of n is equal to x n for every n belongs to n of x naught is a net in x because n of x naught is a directed set and we have a mapping from directed set to x so this is a net in x and uh, we, you know, we can denote it by xn where n belongs to f of x naught 
axis and then in x. We shall show that xn converges to x0. Let p be a neighborhood of x0. Then for each w in n of x0, such that w is contained in v, image of w under f is equal to, by definition, is equal to xw, it belongs to w and it is contained in v. So we have shown that this net f is eventually in this neighborhood v and v is any neighborhood of x0, so f is eventually in each neighborhood of x0. Hence, uh, net xn and belongs to n of x0 converges to find x0. Now, G composition f is a mapping from n of x0 to y. That is, uh, G of f of n such that n belongs to n of x0, that means G of xn such that n belongs to n of x0 is a net in y. But it does not converge to G of x0. As we can see that M is a neighborhood of G of x0 and G of xn doesn't belong to M for every n belongs to n of x0. That is, it is not eventually in the neighborhood M of G of x0. As the net xn converges to x0, but the net G of xn does not converge to point G of x0, which contradicts the hypothesis as we have assumed that whenever fa converges to x0, G of fa converges to G of x0. But here we arrive at a contradiction, so our assumption is wrong, hence G must be continuous at x0.